you're doing it wrong, watch this video on how to use your retinol the right way. I'm Dr. Daniel Sagai. I'm a board certified dermatologist in the Seattle area. We are getting close to my five year anniversary on the YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching the video. Thank you for subscribing and hitting the bell notification. Every Saturday I'm coming out with long form videos and I've really been appreciating you all tuning in and your wonderful engagement. So thank you. Let's jump into this important video because I still see patients. I still see quite a bit of patients, nearly 30 patients a day, and many patients come in saying, you know, I tried that retinol that you recommended online, or I've tried that tretinoin, which is another retinoid, it's a prescription retinoid that you prescribed me, and I have a hard time tolerating it. So some people say I'm allergic, or I just can't use it. I'm not the right candidate for a retinoid, but this video will go through the mistakes that you're making and also ways to get around those signs of intolerance that will mimic an allergy or just you having a sensitivity that you can never get over to a retinoid. But we will go through ways that you can try to tolerate your retinoid better. And retinol is the classic over-the-counter vitamin A derivative product that we can buy, whether it's rock in a jar, Olay Retinol 24 is another one that we've talked about on the channel quite a bit, or things in a pump like Alpha Ret by Skin Better Science, or another pump here that's number seven Retinol 1%. So I talk about retinols that may work for you. These are gentle. I've been using these for quite some time, so I'm really, really gonna try and have you save your time and money and go for products that I really stand by and my patients also like to use. And you can never predict whether a product will work perfectly for you. It's definitely a trial and error type of process. And so I like to talk about products with a good track record, works well for those with sensitive skin, and you're not gonna break the bank. When it comes to retinoids though, I will break the bank for really good ones, like say the Alpha Ret by Skin Better Science. You can buy this on the online store. I'll have the link down below. Everything else we talk about, usually you can find at your local store. And so why do we like retinoids so much? Much. Retinol has to be converted twice to become the prescription retinoid tretinoin or retin-A. That's retinoic acid. Retinol is readily found uh, over the counter like we talked about and it's great for anti-aging benefits. Wrinkles, fine lines, hyperpigmentation, helps with complexion, helps with the texture of your skin and just gives you a nice youthful glow. Also helps with keeping your pores clear. It's not the perfect acne medication. If you're suffering from acne, it's causing scarring and it's worsening diffusely over the face or the body definitely don't just keep using your retinol. See your dermatologist for other retinoids that are better at targeting acne because retinoids are not made the same. They are targeting different retinoid receptors in the nucleus and I'd say adapalene is better for acne and these retinols are better for anti-aging. So let's go over some mistakes. Mistake number one, people are using their retinoids during the day, use it at bedtime, especially tretinoin, which is very sensitive to light, even artificial light up above in our ceiling. Indoor lights have been shown to degrade your retinoids like tretinoin. So not just sunlight, but also the indoor lights. So I always say do it at bedtime, right before you go to bed, and make sure that when you apply your retinoid that it's at its max efficiency, and that is not during the day because sunlight is just playing against you and it's gonna degrade your product it will not go into the nucleus and bind to those nuclear receptors to give all those magical benefits. So apply it at bedtime. Number two, apply it to dry skin. After you cleanse your face, you can wash your face with an, a gentle exfoliating cleanser, like uh, something with benzoyl peroxide or this with salicylic acid by Cetaphil. I like to do that at the end of the day to clear out my pores. After clinic, after playing sports, after working out at the gym, I'm gonna wash my face. And I don't like to mix exfoliants that are leave-on with your retinoid, but cleansers yes you can do that you can cleanse wash off that cleanser pat dry then I'll go and like eat dinner or go about my evening and then when I'm about to go to bed I'm gonna apply my retinoid the reason behind applying your retinoid to dry skin and not damp skin is because your skin becomes more porous when it's wet or damp and when you apply your retinoid it's more likely to go deeper in the skin and cause irritation you want it to be a gentle process of applying your retinoid, especially in the beginning, the first three weeks, you may get irritation from your retinoid and that is normal. And I always tell my patients you have to push through that first three weeks because it can be a little rough. You might have a little bit more acne purging. People talk about that purge, but it doesn't usually last very long and it's not usually as dramatic as people think or worry about or fear. And so if you can push through that, that would be great. I don't want I don't want you being turned off too soon by your retinoid. So apply it to damp skin. Number three would be you're not moisturizing with your retinoid. When you're an advanced user, you apply your retinoid and then follow up with a moisturizer. If you are someone with very sensitive skin 
or if you have rosacea, you might wanna go with the retinoid sandwich method where you apply a moisturizer before and after. And it could be any moisturizer that you like. If you are someone with mature skin, I'd say someone, you know, I, I even will say I'm mature, I have mature skin. Someone in your 30s, like mid 30s and up, go with a peptide containing moisturizer to help further boost that collagen production. So retinoids, we love them because they increase collagen production, but you can also go with some nice peptide moisturizers. This is a Neutrogena, you got Naturium. We got One Skin, great moisturizers to apply after and before your retinoid. And yes, the retinoid will penetrate through the moisturizer into the epidermis and then work its magic in your skin. And so I'd say go for a peptide containing moisturizer if you're in your mid thirties and up. And if, if you're not, then go ahead and use any moisturizer that you like, whether it's Cetaphil, CeraVe. I like the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5. Very soothing, especially in the beginning when you start getting that irritation, you might wanna have that on hand. You might even experience dry lips, even though you're not applying the retinol to your lips, and you shouldn't, you don't have to, you might get some dryness around the mouth or even of the lips itself. Also, I wanna caution that you could, you might even see some of the product diffusing towards the eyelid and towards the neck. You're not applying the medication or to the eyelid skin and you can apply it to your neck but don't put, apply it to your eyelids so if you have that issue if you're getting really dry irritated skin around your eyes definitely make sure that you're applying that pea sized amount to the face but staying outside of the orbital rim and maybe even apply a layer of petrolatum ointment like aquaphor vaseline cerave healing ointment one of those on the eyelid skin first then go ahead and apply your pea size amount to your face. If you wanna bring it down to your neck, go ahead there and just do a half pea size amount to your neck. But if you don't wanna treat your neck and you're really sensitive here, this is very delicate skin, I worry about it. But if your retinoid is migrating down to your neck and you're not intentionally treating there, but it's moving there and you're waking up with a red swollen neck, moisturize your neck as well. Moisturize there first, moisturize around your eyelids, and then go ahead and apply your retinoid. And always follow up with the moisturizer after your retinoid, no matter what, that's non-negotiable. I want I want to make sure that you're able to tolerate it all year round, even in the winter time where it's much more of a sensitive time for our skin. So make sure to wear your moisturizer afterwards. But if you're really sensitive, stick with the retinoid sandwich method indefinitely. You can apply that layer of moisturizer first, then your retinol, and then apply your moisturizer after it. So that's the sandwich method. The last mistake I wanna really emphasize is the amount of retinoid you're using. Don't use more than a pea sized amount of retinoid, of any retinoid, whether it's tazeratine or tretinoin or retinol, retinaldehyde, use a pea sized amount. Or if it's a serum, just a, a, you know three to four drops is probably all you need for the entire face. Pea sized amount for your entire face, half a pea for your neck. If you wanna do your whole decollete area, you can maybe get away with a pea size, but always moisturize afterwards, okay? I'm gonna show you real quick. This is Rock. Rock is the first retinol I ever used as a dermatology resident. So this is a brand that is very near and dear to me. This is their max hydration, their fragrance free retinol. But I'm gonna show you, that's a pea, okay? Break it up into two. Dots on the face. I like to put a little extra on my forehead and my nose because it can take it. It's more hardy skin. So you got dots in your face. Then you're gonna go ahead and connect the dots. If you have perioral dermatitis, avoid retinol around the mouth while your dermatologist is treating you for that because it will irritate your perioral derm. Okay. People think that if they apply more than that, that it's gonna work faster or better, but that's not true. It's just gonna increase your risk of irritant contact dermatitis. You're gonna wake up with a swollen red face and it's gonna set you back and you're gonna to have to stop using a retinoid for some time until your skin recovers. It's all you need all year round. People think, oh, I'm gonna use less retinol during the summertime because I am, I'm afraid this is gonna make me sensitive to the sun. No, continue your pea size amount into the summer as well but always be sure to wear sunscreen the next day, whether it's in the fall, winter, spring, summer, you're gonna wear your sunscreen the next day, whether it's a moisturizer with SPF, you can wear a dedicated moisturizer. And also I wanted to highlight Elta MD's new UV skin recovery. This is a red color correcting face sunscreen that comes out green. So for my patients with rosacea, I'm gonna start recommending this sunscreen to them. This is zinc oxide only. SPF 50, whoops. And look at that beautiful green tint. Tint will complement the red and hide the red. 
So you can go ahead and wear that the next day. If you have broken blood vessels, flushing with rosacea, uh, go ahead and use your sunscreen because that's very important when you're using a retinol. You want to protect your skin and not have a rosacea flare because if you have a rosacea flare, it's going to be really hard to tolerate your retinol. So we want to avoid rosacea flares as much as possible. And sun is one of the most common triggers for rosacea. So check out LTMD's new sunscreen with a green tint. Okay. Thanks to my patient for giving me a heads up on that because I was in the loop apparently. And then when I went to our country's largest conference, the American Academy of Dermatology conference in Orlando, Florida, I was able to talk to LTMD. MD, try out the products and I've been really impressed by this green tinted sunscreen that really blends in well even in skin of color my dermatology colleagues or skin of color enjoyed uh, using the sunscreen as well so check that one out and I hope this video helps you in tolerating your retinol although there are some people even some other dermatologists who can never tolerate a retinoid right they can do even the weakest one retinil or even adapalene over-the-counter adapalene some individuals just will never be able to tolerate a retinoid which is you know you're, you're kind of missing on the fun but there are other things you could do to try to increase collagen like we talked about peptide moisturizers maybe vitamin c serums could help and maybe chemical peels to cause microtrauma and maybe help stimulate some collagen production but if you're not able to tolerate a retinoid it's a little hard to tolerate a chemical peel so always talk to your dermatologist first before jumping into even an over-the-counter chemical peel if you have very sensitive skin okay so i hope this uh, video was helpful please hit the like button Please subscribe to the channel. Please share it with your friends who are into skincare. And I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace.